Hi everyone, I'm Chris the Word Whiz. Today, I'm going to teach you how to divide words into syllables. We will look for syllables in words in order to decode or read those words. Remember that a syllable will always contain a vowel. This is helpful when we are trying to use syllables to help us figure out a word. First, let's talk about open syllables. These are syllables that end with a vowel, like tiger. And pilot. The first syllables in both of those words are open because they end with a vowel. Open syllables often have long vowel sounds. Closed syllables end with a consonant like sandwich. Carpet. The first syllables in both of those words are closed because they end in a consonant. Closed syllables tend to have short vowel sounds. Let's try another one. We can see that there are two vowels in this word, separated by two consonants. So there are probably two syllables. If I divide the two syllables, pick and nick, I can see that those are both closed syllables and probably have short vowel sounds. Pick, Nick. We can use this strategy to decode longer words as well. Let's try this one. You can see that this word has three vowels, each separated by consonants. So it has three closed syllables, bass and ket and ball. This means that the vowel sounds are probably short. Bass, ket, ball. You can also check to see if you have divided the word into syllables correctly using this trick. Say the word out loud and place your hand under your chin as you say it. Bass, ket, ball. See my chin hit my hand three times. So this word has three syllables. Let me show you one more. Try it with me. Ba, na, na. Three syllables. So the next time you come across a word that seems tricky, stop and look for syllables. See you soon. Hello, it is Chris the Word Whiz, here with my super cool knight armor. Today, we'll learn how to read words with silent letters. Take a look at that word, knight. Do you notice anything strange about it? Usually, we begin figuring out a word by looking at the beginning letter. But that doesn't work here. This word breaks the rules. It is a jail word. Words like this, with a silent letter, are very tricky. Let's look at some more rule breakers. Here are two more words that begin with a silent K. Knock. And knob. We do not pronounce the K at the beginning of these words just like we do not pronounce the K at the beginning of night. These words break the rules, so I'll send them to the word jail too. There are other words that try to trick you too. 
Check these out. In this word, honest, we do not pronounce the H at the beginning. In the word ghost, the H is not at the beginning of the word, but we still do not pronounce the H sound. Now let's look at some silent B words. The B in both of these words is silent. We do not pronounce it. Thumb, climb. The last silent letter we will look at today is the silent W, like in answer and rap. Again, these words are tricky. They don't follow the rules because we do not pronounce the W sound in either word. These are jail words, too. Okay, are you ready to show what you know about those tricky silent letter words? Look at this word. Can you guess which letter is silent? That's right. The K is silent. This is the word not. Here's another one. Are you ready? Check this word out. Can you guess the silent letter? You bet! That word has a silent B. It is the word comb. One more. Don't get tricked. Can you find the silent letter in this word? Awesome job! There is no fooling you. This is the word right. Wow! There sure are a lot of tricky silent letter words. Good thing you have me around to throw these rule breakers into the word jail. Don't let them trick you when you are out there reading. What other words with silent letters can you think of? Let me know in the comments below this video. See you soon! Hello, I am Chris the Word Whiz. Let's take a look at prefixes today. Prefixes are groups of letters in front of a word. These change the meaning. We will look at four prefixes. Re, un, by, and dis. Here's one, review. When we add re to a word, it means again. Hmm, okay. So, view means to look at something. If we add re, we would have look at something again. We review words before a spelling test. Rebuild. Let's look here. So, we already know that re means again. What does rebuild mean? Yes, build again. Very nice. Un is another prefix. It means not. Like in unhappy. That means not happy. Here's another one. Untie. A shoe that is untied would be not tied. Let's look at by now. I know that by means two. Do you think of bicycle? If we look at bicycle, it means there are two cycles or circles. Bicycles have two circles for wheels. Did you ever hear of bi-color? We know what color means. If we have bi or two in front of it, it would mean two colors. 
The last one we will inspect today is dis. When dis is in front of a word, it can mean not. So, if we say he is dishonest, we are saying he is not honest. Take a look at this. Dislike. What does that mean? Yes, it means to not like something. Nice work! You know four prefixes. I bet you will see many of these words now when you are reading. Bye for now! Hello, I am Chris the Word Whiz. We will look at the end of words today. Are you ready to look carefully? Let's go! Suffixes are letters at the end of a word. These change the meaning. We will look at four suffixes. Full, less, li, and a bull. Here's one, truthful. When we add full to a word, it means full of, just like it sounds. So, truthful would be full of truth. If you are a truthful person, you are full of the truth, or you tell the truth often. How about painful? What do you think that would mean? Yes, full of pain. Ouch! Another suffix is less. This means without. So if we had use and added less, it would mean without a use. A hammer is useless for this project. It is without use for this. Let's look at fearless. Less means without. So this would mean without fear. She was fearless when she swam in the ocean. So she wasn't afraid. We looked at full and less. Our third suffix is li. This one is a little trickier, but I know you can handle it. Li answers the question, how? Sometimes it answers the question, how often? You can try this one. She acts friendly to everyone. What question does it answer? How does she act? You got it! She is friendly. Let's look at another word with Lee. The class has a weekly music lesson. This answers the question, how often? A weekly lesson would happen once a week. We have one more suffix for today. A bull. It means you can do something. It looks like the word able, but as a suffix, we say a bull. Like in the word washable. A washable sweater would be a sweater that can be washed. Hmm, what about lovable? The dog is lovable. What would it mean? Yes, you can love the dog. Nice work! You know four suffixes. 
I bet you will see many of these words now when you are reading. Bye for now! Hey friends! Today, I'll tell you what parts can be found in a word, and how suffixes and prefixes help us build new words. Let's go! We need to build a house for these little birds, or they'll catch a cold. Build is a verb. If we add the letters ER to it, we'll get the noun builder, which means a person who builds something. In the word builder, build is a base word, and er is a suffix. A suffix is added at the end of a base word and changes its meaning. No worries! We'll rebuild the birdhouse. If we add the letters RE in front of the base word build, we'll get a new verb, rebuild, which means to build something again. Re is a prefix. It helps to create a word with a new meaning too. will be our protection in bad weather. The roof will protect my nestlings against rain, and the walls will protect them against wind. Without this house, we felt unprotected. Protect is a verb that means to keep someone or something safe. If we add the suffix I-O-N to the base word protect, we'll get the word protection which is a noun. We can also add the prefix un and the suffix ed to the base word at the same time. And the new word will be unprotected, which means not kept safe from danger. Chris's kindness saved us from the cold wind and rain. Thank you for being so kind, Chris. Kind is an adjective. The suffix ness helped us turn this base word into the noun kindness. If we add the prefix un to the word kind, we'll get the word unkind. Un means not. That's why unkind describes someone who's not kind. I choose to be kind. Goodbye! Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.